Hello guys, welcome back to the Brutal Investor channel and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. In this episode, we're going to talk again about a new listing that Binance uh, announced today uh, for the token called Staffy or FIS. So Binance will list Staffy in the Innovation Zone. Uh, the announcement reads as follows. So Binance will list Staffy in the Innovation Zone and will open trading for FIS BTC, FIS BUSD, and FIS USDT trading pairs. Users can now start depositing FIS in preparation for trading, right? So what is Staffy? Staffy is a DeFi protocol that unlocks the liquidity of stake as staked assets. FIS is the native utility token of the platform and is used for on-chain governance, value capture, staking, and paying transaction fees, right? So basically, um, if you look at um, all uh, DeFi protocols these days, when you stake something, you uh, basically uh, get a reward. And this is usually an inflationary reward or you know uh, any form of fees that the, the ecosystem uh, generates. But the problem with staking is if you stake your tokens within a particular ecosystem, you won't be able to use that stake tokens or any form of, you know, uh, uh, a sub token to interact with other DeFi projects to earn more yield, right? But what Staffy aims to do is to create this ecosystem where um, it's a platform, uh, it's a protocol that unlocks the liquidity of staked assets, right? So when you stake something, you are able to use that staked asset uh, in a liquid fashion where it can be used for yield farming or further staking in another, uh, in another uh, protocol uh, or so on and so forth, right? So FIS is the native utility token of the platform and it's used for on-chain governance just like many other protocols, value capture and uh, basically uh, FIS is basically uh, a token that is whose price is determined based on the market buy and sell uh, pressures, staking and paying transaction fees, right? So you can stake FIS just like any other DeFi protocol and pay transaction fees within their network uh, in order to participate in their DeFi application, right? So it's a pretty cool, um, quick overview. And uh, let's look at a much more detailed overview of this project uh, on Binance Research. So if you guys want to go through the Staffy project uh, and understand uh, uh, the project in, uh, in a quick and simpler version, you can go to research.binance.com and search for Staffy, right? So what is Staffy's mission statement? Uh, a DeFi protocol unlocking liquidity of staked assets, right? That's pretty much the uh, main focus of this protocol where they want to unlock uh, staked assets and uh, un unlock staked assets uh, and use them uh, and help uh, users to use them in different other uh, DeFi aspects, right? So that's a pretty cool statement. So Staffy is a DeFi uh, protocol that unlocks liquidity of staked assets. Users can stake proof of stake tokens, example DOT, FIS, etc., through Staffy staking contracts and receive R tokens, R DOT, R FIS, etc., right? In return, uh, which are available for trading to hedge against market volatility while still earning staking rewards. So that's a pretty cool and interesting concept in DeFi. So uh, basically what they're saying is, if you stake any proof of stake based tokens such as DOT, or F FIS, for their no own uh, native utility token, you can stake them in order to receive an equivalent amount of R tokens, which is basically R dot or R FIS or whatever. And you can use these R dot or R tokens, and you can use them for liquidity uh, providing or further staking or what, do whatever you want with it while still earning staking rewards, right? So if you want to withdraw your staking rewards, you just return back the R tokens and get back your original tokens plus the staking rewards, right? So that is pretty incredible in my opinion. The reason is you can do this for liquidity uh, provider tokens, but in a liquidity providing uh, scenario, you would have to, first of all, provide two different tokens in uh, the same ratio, right? In the same dollar value, right? Let's say, for example, if you are uh, staking, um, you know, uh, 100 ETH or something like that, you should also stake the equivalent amount of uh, other tokens or even a stable coin uh, in, in the same proportion, right? And the problem with liquidity providing uh, feature is that when you provide liquidity, yes, you do receive, um, you know, 
not only the liquidity provision fees, uh, which is usually 0.3% uh, depending on the uh, exchange, but mostly it's going to be 0.3%. Uh, uh, when you provide liquidity providing a provision, you get LP tokens, which you can then stake in the protocol's ecosystem and earn their native token or some other token, right? That's pretty much the, the go-to or the common scenario that you hear from every protocol in general. Uh, but the problem is not everybody wants to be a liquidity provider, right? The reason is uh, not everyone wants to own two tokens. And even if they do own two tokens, um, two unrelated tokens, uh, again, they have to ensure that the two tokens are of the same dollar value, right? When they provide liquidity. And when they do provide liquidity, they most people are not really aware of the impermanent loss, but most liquidity providers get seriously hit with impermanent losses. Uh, if you don't know what impermanent loss is, impermanent loss is basically uh, when the price of one of the two liquidity provider to uh, the liquidity provider tokens that you kind of like uh, provide liquidity to will go up or down and that will affect how uh, the overall balanced pool's value is. Uh, and in return, you get a little bit of uh, tokens uh, you know, removed from the uh, initial two token pool, right? So if you feel like that is complicated when it comes to explanation, you can go through several uh, YouTube videos or even read Google articles uh, or articles on Google about uh, liquidity, pro liquidity providing risk and impermanent loss and uh, you'll be able to understand that, right? So how does Staffy solve this problem for people who want to uh, stake but also you know, do something with their staked tokens or who don't want to provide liquidity, but they still want to participate in other, you know, uh, reward-based applications, right? So what you can do is uh, use uh, Staffy in order to get R tokens and use those R tokens just like a liquidity providing uh, token and trade it or do whatever you want with it or even borrow with it or lend it or whatever, right? So that's a pretty cool innovation in my opinion. It's a very subtle and, you know, very uh, mild innovation but it's going to revolutionize DeFi moving forward, right? Because when this project does this, there's going to be several other projects that will be on the line to do the same or copy the same, uh, you know, um, pro like your know, protocol mechanism, right? So FIS is Staffy Protocol's native utility token and is used for the following functions, right? Staking, validators in Staffy consensus need to stake FIS to join the consensus network and the nominators need to stake FIS to participate, right? So if you hold FIS token, what are the benefits? You can stake it. Validators in Staffy consensus need to stake FIS to join the consensus network. So if you want to join the consensus network as a validator, you can stake your uh, uh, Staffy token or FIS token. Uh, and the nominators need to stake FIS to participate. So if you are to nominate people, you can participate as a validator by um, you know staking your Staffy token or FIS token, right? So that's pretty cool. Transaction fees. In order to avoid system abuse, the initiator of a transaction has to pay FIS to access computing resources. In this way, uh, invalid transactions will be eradicated, similar to how other Polkadot chains function, right? So just to uh, provide you guys with this information, this pro project is basically a Polkadot-based project. So you're kind of seeing more and more um, innovative projects springing up in the Polkadot based or, uh, or projects that aim to be uh, auctioned and uh, in a Polkadot, uh, you know, parachain auction. Uh, and these kind of projects are recently getting more and more creative and innovative, even though the innovation is really subtle, right? So you can use FIS token to pay transaction fees in order to avoid system abuse. And also any invalid transaction will be eradicated, right? So the transaction will be removed and the fees will be lost. So that's a pretty cool feature. On-chain governance, FIS holders can participate in changing the Staffy protocol parameters, vote for protocol upgrades and determine development courses, right? Anyone can hand in proposals to the protocol, but only holders of FIS can vote for or against a proposal one FIS uh, account for one ballot, right? So 
On-chain governance is a pretty common concept in DeFi ecosystems. Uh, every e ecosystem, uh, every DeFi ecosystem has its own governance token, and you can participate in the future development of the token of the of the project itself. And uh, you know, you get uh, a say in the in the um, in the activities that's happening in the protocol, right? Similar to that, this protocol this protocol also has a FIS token, which is a governance token, right? Value capture majority of Staffy protocols platform fees. Transaction fees and liquidity fees will be used to fund and buy back and burning of FIS tokens. The distribution of staff fees earnings may change based on governance decisions, right? So the main feature of this particular token is that um, since it is going to be bought back and burnt, uh, every transaction fee and liquidity fee, this token is a deflationary token by nature, right? Which is going to, uh, you know, um, benefit token holders who hold this token for long term, right? So that's a pretty cool feature as well for uh, this token. So Staffy unlocks the liquidity of staked assets via staking contracts. The pool consists of following major components working in conjunction. R tokens and R token is a derivative asset issued by Staffy based on staking tokens. Holding R tokens means uh, that you can apply for redemption of native staking tokens at any time. It also means that token holders of R tokens have the right to the yields of staking tokens, right? So again, pretty straightforward concept as explained. R tokens are generated when you stake uh, as proof of stake token in the Staffy ecosystem. And these R tokens basically uh, are like a certificate to show that you did stake and therefore you're entitled to staking rewards. But you can also use this R tokens for other DeFi based applications, trading, whatever, right? So that's a pretty cool feature. Staking contracts, a set of code con uh, containing core functions of Staffy, including uh, such as pledging, redemption, and transaction. It also records the mapping relationship between R tokens and underlying staking tokens. The role of staking contracts in Staffy is similar to CDP contracts in MakerDAO, right? So uh, basically what they're seeing is it's a, a set of code containing core functions of Staffy, such as pledging, redemption, and transaction. It's a, uh, the staking contract itself is a, it's a, co it's a contract which, can, which is made up of codes, obviously, and it includes pledging, redemption, and transactions to occur on it. Uh, it also records the mapping relationship between R tokens and the underlying staking assets. So this contract, smart contract uh, manages R tokens because they should obviously not only be in proportions to the staking token, the stake tokens in the first place, but they should also reflect the rewards accrued by the staking token, right? The role of staking contracts in Staffy is similar to CDP contracts in MakerDAO, exactly the same as MakerDAO, where you provide collateral and in return you get you mint um, uh, DAI tokens. Um, and uh, when you return the DAI tokens, you are able to retrieve back your collateral, right? Similar to that, you when you stake, you get R tokens, and when you return back the R tokens, you get your stake tokens plus the staking rewards, right? So it's a pretty cool concept. Multi-sign account, the interim account that Staffy uses to manage staking tokens and participate in staking. So again, it's a multi-sign account. Uh, it's an interim account that Staffy uses to manage staking tokens and participate in staking themselves, right? So that's pretty uh, straightforward. Staffy Special Validator, SSV. SSVs are different from SV uh, in that SSVs are responsible for managing multi-signature accounts and validating the original chain transaction status. They use multi-signature transactions to handle staking tokens in the account, right? So basically, uh, Special staking validator is the unique. It's also another unique concept with the Staffy. It is different from uh, staking validator, uh, which is SV. In that SSVs are responsible for managing multi-signature uh, accounts and validating the original chain transaction status. Right. So this is basically responsible for uh, you know managing transactions on the smart contract as well as in multi-signature accounts that they briefly mentioned at the top. Uh, they use multi-signature account, uh, multi-signature transactions to handle staking tokens in the account, right? Which is pretty straightforward as well. Staffy raised is $990,000 uh, worth of Staffy was raised from four rounds of token sales. So you can clearly see the percentage points of the token sales that were sold and the different prices for the different four token sales that they had, right? And you can see that uh, at, uh, 10, uh, like 13 cents was the maximum uh, price that they had sold their tokens to in their uh, uh, seed sales 
and um, they have raised about uh, 990000 dollars which is close to a million dollars right as of march 3 2021 uh, the total supply of fis is 104 uh, million tokens and the current um, circulating supply is 21.2% right so this circulating supply is relatively high comparing ma- many other tokens uh circulating supply so that's a pretty cool feature but also you can see that uh, since it's already 104 million tokens you can expect new tokens to kind of like get released into the market that kind of temporarily dilutes every every other token holders values uh for the short term but for the long run once ethereum uh you know once uh, polka dot ecosystem uh, auction parachain auctions uh, take place and once people start realizing the full potential of this project you can see more and more people staking their um, proof of stake tokens and thereby using their r tokens to yield farm right which is going to be pretty cool and that will cause for uh, more and more fis tokens to be staked which will increase the price in the positive direction right so that's pretty cool again that pretty much covers all the summary information for staffy so if you guys again want to do your own research and understand uh, you know what it is when it comes to the broad scope you can go to binance research page and read about this token right so let's go to staffy's uh, website and if you want to go to their website go to m.staffy.io where you can find their docs you can also find their docs uh, if you want to do use shortcut uh, you can go to binance research and look at staffy and you'll you'll have additional links at the bottom that will also link their white paper and other documents that are relevant to the project right uh, or you can find it from the website it's up to you so basically liquidate liquidate your staking assets right eliminate the risk of price fluctuations when staking it's a pretty straightforward uh, explanation they also have a pretty cool website uh, liquid token r token anyone who holds staking tokens can easily stake via a staking contract and obtain uh, an alternate uh, alternative token r token to trade and exchange immediately without waiting for the locking period to complete right pretty straightforward explanation a decentralized protocol to provide the liquidity of your staking assets staking uh, assets will be spendable and tradable with the estimated annual return in the near future so they are still in early developments this project uh, and they they aim to use um the r tokens to spend and to use uh in the near future for other applications and it's also tradable with other assets right so that's pretty cool staking assets r tokens which is pretty straightforward btc eth usdt sfi and so on and so forth right um r token issuance convenient secure and fast r token issuance provides the liquidity of your staking assets you can trade it um in staffy protocol and redeem it from staking blockchain anywhere uh, anytime anywhere our innovative structure will uh, protect the ownership of your original assets right so again basically saying the same thing that they mentioned before in multiple different sentences or multiple different ways so stakers there's a cool picture if you still don't understand how it works maybe uh, after watching this image you'll probably get a better idea so stakers uh, they deposit in staking contracts and staking contracts basically you know staking protocol uh and uh, again bunch of arrows that show it is kind of like more confusing than i thought it would but anyway overall what you need to understand is if you deposit uh, or stake in staffy you will get r tokens and your original tokens will continue to be staked and will continue to earn rewards while your r tokens are usable for multiple defi applications right that's pretty much uh, the simplest way i could potentially explain a decentralized staking contract to help staking earn dividend on your shares and make staking more decentralized you have complete control over your staking assets the security of the contract can only be re- redeemed by the r token holder so when you're staking it you won't have to worry about people stealing your money because if you want to access the the stake tokens you have to return back the r tokens in order to get back the stake tokens right so it's pretty straightforward stake contract will uh, make sure the r tokens could be tradable uh, again something that we already discussed before redeemable again pretty straightforward concept contractable every staking is controlled by an individual staking contract which connects to the original blockchain directly staking assets will be secure and can only be redeemed by the r again pretty much uh, the same thing said in a different way the road map so the road map is a pretty interesting uh, section of the of the page right so they were working since october 2018 uh, 
uh, the white paper and website was released on July 2019, Substrate Integration on October 2019, Smart Contract on November 2019, uh, CFC Staking Module Jan 2020, POC Testnet Feb 2020, Staking Contracts April 2020, Public Testnet July 2020, Incentive Testnet to August 2020 and Mainnet it's, uh, it's currently I think in underway, I don't know if its Mainnet is officially live but I believe that it's still in the works. So you can also see the team members here and I believe you can uh, click them and go to their LinkedIn page. I haven't tested it myself but you can go through their information to find out, right? Or you can search them manually on LinkedIn if you want to know more about the developers itself. So that's pretty much the website for Staffy. Uh, if you look at the right, they have blogs and white paper. I don't think they have an official working mainnet yet. So I don't think you'll be able to find it. But uh, let's move on to the CoinGecko page for Staffy, right? So Staffy is currently the 447th ranked token by market cap on coin market cap and despite getting a Binance listing it's surprising that this token hasn't actually pumped like crazy and it's in fact uh, like in reality it's down 8.1% in the past 24 hours right and that is actually very surprising to me it happens every once in a while but most of the times you can expect a Binance pump to be uh, like the main reason for the token to pump in the past 24 hours, right? But anyway, the token price is $3.28 as of the time of making this video. And it's currently at $36 million in market cap, right? Again, I only expect this to grow because of all the interest that people who want to stake their tokens and use their uh, staked uh, R tokens to participate in yield farming. And I also believe that this, along with all Polkadot projects, will ki kind of skyrocket once, uh, you know, the uh, parachain auctions on the polka dot happens uh, ideally it will only happen in the kusama chain first before it happens in the polka dot chain but once that happens you can expect all polka dot projects including staffy to skyrocket right so that's pretty cool that will be something that you can definitely expect to see in in the upcoming uh, few months to year uh, so the maximum supply is 102 uh, uh, million tokens uh, and the current circulating supply is 11.2 million tokens, right? Again, as we saw, it was 21.2% uh, uh, of the max supply. So there will be initially uh, new tokens that will be released after the staking rewards or whatever that will kind of temporarily dilute the market value of all tokens. But since this protocol is mainly going to be like staking to based to protocol, I believe that the FIS token, as more and more gets staked, no matter how many new tokens are released in the market, it will kind of still cause for uh, the price to go up because it's not going to be dilutive because as many other tokens are staked, right? So I don't see that issue happening for this token, which means potentially this token will be a good uh, gainer for short term as well as long term, right? But uh, again, it also depends on how well people are interested in staking their FIS token uh, in the in this platform is, and uh, that's will that will probably determine the the future of this project, right? So let's look at um, the charts again. There's not going to be a lot of action here as predicted because if you see uh, since 2020 September, the price has pretty much slumped, and uh, it was uh, you know almost at its all-time lows uh, in December 2020, where it was 51 cents, and uh, since uh, you know. Uh, specifically since early February, you can, you, you can see that the token price has spiked up and now it's currently like having a mild pullback. I don't really see this token, you know, completing its pullback. I believe that the pullback will happen a little bit longer. Uh, this token has uh, not been impacted by the Binance listing and therefore, uh, you know, you can expect that uh, a lot of people are not really interested in this token for the time being. Uh, I believe probably is because of the fact that there's no active mainnet or there's no active staking uh, format which people can use. So I believe that is one of the reasons why this token hasn't actually performed well. Uh, but at the same time, if you are looking to hold this token or buy this token at this time, you can probably buy it uh, at a later stage. I believe that this token price will kind of fall down uh, and probably reach around the $2, $2.50 range which will be a good buy opportunity for this token, right? I would personally buy this uh, after a while. I don't think I need to buy this token in a rush because if you see the price point, it, it still has a it still has a way to go to, uh, you know, before it can go up again, right? So I'm pretty, pretty sure that this token is going to go down uh, and I will probably uh, buy it at the time or even dollar cost average when it's kind of like cross the $2.70 range. 
but uh, you can definitely expect this token to go down right let's look at the btc comparator you can see that um, the btc comparator has also been pretty slumpy and uh, you know it's nowhere near its all time highs and it's also not its, at its all time lows right in a similar in a similar fashion you can clearly see that the satoshi price uh, comparison kind of like spiked a bit but now it's kind of slumping down i do expect the satoshi value uh, satoshi comparative to also go down further and uh, retest the uh, 5000 satoshi mark uh, and probably that would be a really good entry point if you're trying to buy this right uh, initially for the short term depending on uh, you know uh, retail demand or you know uh, people who want to part- use this uh, uh, token for uh, staking and yield farming and all that the interest would the interest would drive the price so it seems like as of now although there had been an initial uh, interest early feb it's kind of going to come down in the short term but once it uh, you know starts getting traction you can expect this token to grow exponentially right and its market cap to explode as well you can also see that the volume charts don't really seem promising although there's this huge volume chart i believe the volume uh, that recently came prior to the binance listing there might have been other factors that influence that this high volume spike but you can expect the volume to go down because this is kind of like an outlier right so that's something that you don't have to worry about but if you see if the market pairs you can obviously get it on binance you can get it with the usd tether and bitcoin but you can also get it from huobi bitmax or uniswap um again as i said there's not a lot of reason to buy it in other exchanges if you already have a binance exchange and it's already available on binance but if you are already having an account in huobi and you like using huobi you can get it from there i wouldn't recommend anyone getting it from bitmax or even uniswap because uniswap will have high fees and bitmax is usually only uh, people only get things from bitmax when you know there's no other option right so that's pretty pretty much it so again what's my verdict on this token i really like the um, tokenomics it's not really uh, it's still slightly above 100000 uh, you know uh, 100 million token supply um, but uh, i personally wouldn't really use that as a reason to hate on this token uh, the market cap is pretty low this uh, token is offering some really good uh, opportunities for people to uh, get some r tokens for staking their proof of stake tokens to use it in other transactions exchange yield farming whatever and that is definitely something that's going to pick up right even though this token may not be this project may not be remembered as the token uh, or the project that started this craze many subsequent tokens or projects including projects in the ethereum ecosystem and binance smart chain ecosystem will use this feature moving forward and this will be something like a common place activity where you can get uh, liquidity provider tokens for staking liquidity or uh, you can also get staking uh, tokens for staking your original assets and use that for yield farming right so that will be a pretty common place uh, feature um, at the price point right now i wouldn't personally buy it if you want to buy it you can go ahead do your own research and buy it again this video is not contains financial advice and i'm not a financial advisor but i would personally wait till i buy it because it does seem to be like there's not a lot of reason for the token to continue going up and for the short term at least it will continue to go down before retesting uh, a support at uh, $2.50 or $2 in the dollar comparative and 5000 satoshis in the satoshi comparative and then probably start moving up right until the main net launches i don't think this token will perform well and uh, you know you the main action for this token will happen only during the polka dot parachain auction and that's when not just this token but all polka dot tokens polka dot based tokens that compete to uh, you know win a parachain auction will skyrocket right and that's when you would see staffy's true power right again remember guys you guys are not regular investors you guys are brutal investors so stay brutal thank you very much for watching my video guys if you like my video please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos see you in my next video bye